Welcome to part one of the lesson on graphing functions by plotting points. In example one, we want to graph the function s of t equals four minus two t. So our function rule is that s of t subtracts two times the input from four. To graph this function by plotting points, we'll complete the table provided below where t is the input and s of t is the output. So we want to begin by selecting inputs find the corresponding outputs, then write the ordered pairs, and then plot the points on the Cartesian plane, where we always find the inputs along the horizontal axis and the outputs along the vertical axis. To try to find points on the graph of S of t on the left and on the right, we'll select both positive and negative values for the input t. Let's select negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Now assuming both axes are scaled by ones, as long as the outputs or the function values are not greater than eight or less than negative eight, then the points given by the ordered pairs with the input and corresponding output will appear on the provided Cartesian plane. If we do get an output that's greater than eight or less than negative eight, then we can always come back and change the input. To find the output when the input is negative two, we'll substitute negative two for t in our function here and here. So when the input is negative two, the output is going to be s of negative two, which is equal to four minus two times negative two. So simplifying, we have s of negative two is equal to four minus two times negative two is equal to negative four. So we'd have s of negative two equals, well, four minus negative four is equivalent to four plus four, and therefore s of negative two equals eight. So when the input is negative two, the output is eight, and therefore the ordered pair is negative two comma eight. The next input is negative one, so the corresponding output is s of negative one, where s of negative one is equal to four minus two times negative one. So s of negative one is equal to four. Now here we're going to have minus negative two, which is equivalent to plus two, so s of negative one is equal to six. So when the output is negative one, so when the input is negative one, the output is six, and the ordered pair is negative one comma six. The next input is zero. So the corresponding output is s of zero, which is four minus two times zero, which is just four minus zero, or four. So when the input is zero, the output is four, and the ordered pair is zero comma four. The next input is one, so the output is going to be s of one, which equals four minus two times one. s of one is equal to four minus two. s of one equals two. So when the input is one, the output is two, and the ordered pair is one comma two. The last input is two, so the corresponding output is s of two, which is four minus two times two. So S of two is equal to four minus four. So S of two is equal to zero. So when the input is two, the output is zero, and the ordered pair is two comma zero. Now let's plot the points given by these ordered pairs. Without the axes being scaled, we assume it's scaled by ones, but if we want, we can also put tick marks and scale the axes. Let's go ahead and do that. And if it's helpful, because the inputs are along the horizontal axis and the input variable is t, we can label the horizontal axis t. And because the outputs are along the vertical axis, we can label the vertical axis s of t. Now the first ordered pair is negative two comma eight. So because the input is negative two and the output is positive eight, we begin by locating negative two on the horizontal axis here, where the input is negative two. And because the output is eight, we go up eight units to here, where the output is eight. So at this point, the input is negative two, and the output is eight. The next order pair is negative one comma six. So the input is negative one, which would be here, and the output is six. So we go up six units to where the output is six. The next order pair is zero comma four. So the input is zero here at the origin, but because the output is four, we go up four units where the output is four. The next order pair is one comma two. 
So we go right one unit to where the input is one, up two units to where the output is two, and then we have the ordered pair two comma zero. So we go to two on the horizontal axis where the input is two, because the output is zero, we don't move up or down, we stay right here on the horizontal axis where the output is zero. Notice at this point, if we go to the vertical axis, the output would be zero. So the graph of S of T passes through these five points, and because the graph is a line, we can say S of T is a linear function. Notice how because the line intersects the vertical axis at positive four, we can say the vertical intercept is the point with coordinates at zero comma four, and because the graph crosses and intersects the horizontal axis at this point here, we can say the horizontal intercept would be the point with coordinates two comma zero. And let's go ahead and label those. And let's go ahead and label those. These are two key points for the graph of a linear function. Before we go, let's check our work on the graphing calculator. So we'll first enter our function, s of t, but we'll actually enter a function of x. So we'll press y equals, clear any old functions, and we're going to enter four minus two x, not four minus two t. So four minus two x. And now let's check our table of values. Let's first check our table set though, by pressing second window. And notice how the table is going to start at negative two, like ours does. The change in the table is by ones, which is how our table changes. The inputs increase by one. And we do want to make sure the independent option is on automatic, which it is. If it wasn't highlighted, we would go down, highlight automatic, and then press enter. Now if we press second graph, we can check the table on the calculator with the table that we created using the inputs and outputs. And notice how the tables match, verifying our work is correct. Now let's also check the graph of our function. To make sure the calculator is set to the standard window, which is from negative 10 to positive 10 on the horizontal and vertical axes, we can press zoom for Z standard, and it will set the axes to negative 10 to positive 10, scaled by ones, again, both horizontally and vertically, and also graph our function. And this does verify our graph is correct. On the graphing calculator, notice how the screen is wider than it is tall, and that's why the graph is a little bit distorted. Notice our Cartesian plane is perfectly square. If we do want to square the Cartesian plane on the graphing calculator, we can press zoom five for z square. And notice how now the line is slanted, more like the line that we graphed by hand. I hope you found this helpful.